Hello, welcome to the second video in this uh, Unreal tutorial series. In this video, we're going to go ahead now and make our first part of the game, which is going to be um, the enemy, enemy detecting us and coming after us. This is what's known as the pawn sensing element. So, um, with our game opened, I showed you this in the, in the last lesson. Um, we need to, let me just clear that. We need to, um, we've got our map. Um, what, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to click the icon there. You see, I'll come out over to the side. I'm going to click this icon and when I click that, apart from being able to move it left and right, I'm just going to change this to level one so that it's something we can use later on in the game. So as I scroll down, um, you will see it says first person template. I can change that to level one. And if I wanted to, I could change the color as well. So change that to level one. But anyway, so we've, we've got our map created. One thing I'd like to do is move our character back in the game. So if I click if I come around and I click our character, I can move him back. I'll move him back to the wall to, to the back wall. Okay, so that we've got our character started off. But what we need now is some um, enemy AI into the game. So to do that, I'm going to steal some characters from a different blue, blueprint template. So I click add new and add new feature or, for, or something from the content pack. I'm going to click a third person. So that means I want this character that you can see here. So I add the project and you'll notice they've been added in. So I can close that down. So now when I go when I navigate along here and I click content, you'll see that I've actually got a a third person content and third person uh, blueprint. We will be working with the first person and the third person blueprints. If I go into blueprints, you'll see I've got third person character. What I'll do, I'll leave the default character. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call it enemy one. So we'll, we'll create this enemy so that it um, We'll do various things and, that, and at the end we can reuse it time and time again. So I'm just going to come back out, up on this map and we'll, we'll probably put the character, we'll put our character in the, in the far corner over here. So all I need to do is drag my player onto the map and then I'll, I'll zoom in. Um, You'll see that he's there and I'll need to rotate him around a bit. So I'll click rotation and I'll move him around. Yeah, that'll be great. So we've now got our character in the map and he'll, um, he, he'll, we'll want him to come after us. If I click, if I click play, um, you, my screen's a bit crammed. If I click play here, when I run into the game now, you'll see there's my enemy character. You'll see that he's a bit through the floor, so uh, that's good. So what I need to do is click him and lift him up a little bit so that he doesn't uh, drop through the floor. Okay, now I've done that, I, we can start to um, work with the enemy AI or use the pawn sensing feature. So I double click the enemy and it opens up a whole new window. I can scroll the scroll mouse in and out and again the left button keep my keep my finger on the right button and I can drag the map around. This is all necessary to move the player around. We're not going to be moving the player around so we don't need any of this for this particular uh, person. We're just dealing the, the graphics really. So that's the event graph where we'll put our events in, but we need to go to the viewport. Um, we don't need the camera because we're not going to be viewing the, this character either. So now, now that we've got our character there, I'm in the viewport. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new component. That new component is called Pawn Sensing. When I click it, I've, I've enabled the feature. Now we should see a load of new features appear on, on the character, but that doesn't seem to happen. I've been stuck with this before. We need to click Compile. And as soon as we've compiled, when I go back and click Pawn Sensing, you can see the character um, has got this new green mesh. Um, if I just press Control, um, I keep a finger on the right button and press A and D, you'll see that he's only seen up and down. That's no good for us. So I can, I can change his peripheral vision. So I'm going to change it to 35. And you'll see now that he's got a, a wider vision. If I scroll out a bit, you can see, you can see quite, he's got quite a, if I go back a bit more, he's got quite a, a long range. So if I change this to say 100, you see he doesn't see far at all. One thousand. If I change it to 1000, you can see slightly further. So you can, you know, this would be handy if you were wanting your character to view in a corridor or something. I'm going to put it at 3000, so he's got a wider um, uh, vision. So that's that, that's that element done. So now I just go back to my event graph and I can start putting in the code for this. Um, because I've got Pawn Sense in tech, if I, if I take off it, you'll see nothing appears here. If I click Pawn Sense in, I've got some features here. So I can click the plus sign and it puts in piece of code there for me. I can make the screen wide if I like. Um, pawn sense in and then this is quite straightforward. There's lots of different ways to do this. This is the way I, I prefer to do it. Well, what we can type in is move move to actor. Um, but we've, we've got a simple, we can do simple move, simple move to actor. So that, that will move to us and it's, and it's the pawn and the goal so that so we need to, to link these together the pawn to the goal and then all we need to do is get the controller for for the uh, enemy ai so we type in get controller and you'll see that it comes up with get controller so basically all we said is on 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 the, the pawn sensing sensing us when the pawn senses us this is this is the controller for um for actually that's not the right one i need to i need to put a, i need to put a new one in actually controller it should be get controller uh target is pawn okay so i i put the wrong one in last time on on pawn sensing simple move to actor and the controller is the pawn target is itself move to the um, move towards the actor. So now we've done that. If I highlight it all and I press C, I can do. Um, I can I can put a tag on my code, so I can call it vision detection, or I could call it enemy vision. There's lots of options that I can use, but this makes it easier to see what this bit of, bit of code does. Um, if I now compile that. Any errors will show there, there weren't any this time. So if I now go to play the game, it won't quite work because what should happen is as I run around here, he should see me, but he isn't and he isn't chasing me. So what I need to do is I need to actually put what's called a nav mesh bounds volume in. So oh, um, got myself a bit lost there. Um, so I'm going to zoom out, zoom a bit further out. This you'll see why this is a lot easier to do with um, a top-down view. So I need to go to volumes here. I click volumes, and you should see nav mesh bounds volume. If I drag that in, say to here, and then I go to my um, scale object. Um, if I press P, this will show you the area that it's going to be active upon. So if I drag out, so I press the letter P, and you'll see it's gone that way. 
and this what this means is is that this is the playable area this is the area that the enemy will detect us in so you see all this is green basically the enemy will not be able to set foot onto this um this area here so i'm going to move that out a bit more and now he's got all of this area if we were to jump on the top of these things he wouldn't be able to see us he wouldn't be able to come after us so i can i can raise that up and now that i've raised the sensor up as well probably the only thing that we he can't get on top of is there so the the enemy can follow us pretty much everywhere where it's green so I'll press p again so now i'll save that and when when that's saved i'll click the play and as i run around he's seeing me and he'll come up to me and he'll continue to to follow me unless i can yeah, i've managed to get out of his range of sight so that's the that's the first lesson in getting the enemy to to follow us in the next lesson i look at ways to um, destroy the enemy and have the enemy destroy us but until then thank you very much